Okay guys, this video is called The Interwar Years and the Rise of Hitler. The interwar years are the period of time between World War I and World War II. It's roughly about 20 years. So let's talk about what we already do know and I'll introduce a new concept as well. The Treaty of Versailles is signed after World War I. That kind of forces Germany to do a bunch of things. We've talked about paying the war debt, accepting blame for the war, um, slashing their military, and getting rid of their colonies around the world. This obviously made a lot of people in Germany upset. Everybody, a lot of people, including America, thought this was a little harsh. Um, and we've argued a little bit that this led to the rise of Hitler and World War II. So let's take it back a little bit before that. Um, the Treaty of uh, Versailles also created this thing called the League of Nations, which was supposed to be a governing body of country leadership from around the world uh, to help keep peace in the world and also handle international relations and issues that came up. Um, it wasn't very successful. It no longer exists, and it's grown into a variety of other things, which we'll get to at a later, later date. Also, after World War I, we know many countries around the world fell into a, kind of a severe economic depression. Germany was no exception, the U.S. was no exception, France and Britain were in it as well, and so all those things kind of give rise to Hitler coming to power, which we'll introduce now. So Hitler's early years, he did fight in World War I. Uh, he was a soldier for the German army. After the war, he joins the German Workers' Party, which its kind of platform, its creed was anti-communist, anti-capitalist, and anti-Semitism, directly, uh, specifically at Jewish people. Um, this party eventually becomes kind of the Nazi party. No, it does become the Nazi party, um, otherwise known as the Nationalist Socialist German Workers' Party, Nazis for short, and their symbol becomes the swastika. So there is the birth of the Nazi party that is still very anti-communist, anti-capitalism, anti-Semite, uh, particularly targeting Jewish people, right? So Hitler becomes the chairman of the Nazi party. And more people are becoming members of the Nazi party because they're starting to grow upset with Germany's situation after the World War I and the Treaty of Versailles, right? So in 1924, Hitler feels like he's got a good hold of the Nazi party. He's got a good strength in membership, and he tries to overthrow the German government. Um, it doesn't really work that well. Um, he's put in jail for a good chunk of 1924 where he writes, though, Mein Kampf, which is kind of his philosophical book. Um, that he lays out his philosophy and also continues to gain more followers from prison um, as people read this book. And I, I've heard estimates that like tens of thousands of copies of this were sold. So it was kind of wild. So Hitler comes out of prison. The Nazi party's gaining a little bit of power. They're still relatively small though, right? And then the Great Depression hits. Uh, the Great Depression hits in the United States in October of 1929 on a day called Black Tuesday. Um, and it also affects the European economy just like Germany. And we always know that usually economic turmoil or depression gives power to extremists like Hitler and the Nazis who want to seize on people's emotions and people's poor uh, lifestyles. So in 1930, Germany has a parliamentary election, which is like representing um, like our House of Representatives, our Senate, kind of like our Congress a little bit. So a lot of people are getting elected. Um, that's called the Reichstag, the parliamentary Germany. Uh, the parliament in Germany is called the Reichstag. Um, and it, Nazis got 18% of the votes. So this is kind of the first time Nazis get government representation. So this is a big move in 1930. And now you'll see how quickly Hitler was able to become in power. Excuse me. In 1932, the economy continues to get worse, so Hitler decides to run for president. He thinks he's going to gamble and see if he can get it. He loses to the uh, president that had been there before, Lindenberg, but he got 35% of the vote, right? And the Nazis continued to gain more representation in the Reichstag. Flash forward <clears throat> one year. Because the Nazis got so much power, in 1933, there was a little bit of um, government turmoil. They didn't really know who was in charge in the parliament. And so in order to kind of create some national unity, the current president of Germany, who was Paul van Hindenburg, is convinced to make Hitler the chancellor, which is basically like the leader of the parliament, the prime minister of the parliament, right? Um, and so he becomes the, prime, he becomes the chancellor or kind of the leader of the Reichstag in 1933. And then in 1933, the Reichstag, the building where the parliament meets, there's a, a mysterious fire. And it was blamed on a, a Dutch communist. Um, and it's still very controversial as to who it started. Did Hitler have anything to do with it? Or did Hitler just capitalize on that fire? Either way, we'll probably never know. Um, but through this kind of crazy fire, Hitler is able to use manipulation and coercion to convince um, Hindenburg to kind of 
put all these processes in place, and then Hitler uses his own kind of German soldiers and parties to add even more corruption um, and scare tactics in order to assume complete control as dictator. So through a variety of different laws and coercion acts and just plain fear, Hitler was able to take over the government by the end of 1933. So we leave this video within a three-year period of Hitler um, not being in power to having complete supreme authority in Germany.